going to get into part two of the segment. So, on this segment of Moments with Murph, this is part two of the types of friends that you don't want to be around. <clears throat> so, the first one, we're going to talk about the taker. Might as well say the undertaker. I really like that word. It's kind of funny. So, for starters, they always ask for money. When they hit you up, you know it's usually for a monetary reason. Oh, bro, can I borrow $20? Oh, man, can I borrow $10? Oh, sis, I got to pay this. Can you help me out? Oh, I'm hungry. Huh? For one, you need to A, evaluate. <laughs> well, that other person needs to evaluate how they're spending their money because you are not an ATM. Yes, we help people, but we are not ATMs. We are not banks at all. We, are, we do not just keep lending out cash or handing out grants unless you have it like that. So I'm talking from like the people like me who are my friends where we're trying to grow, but we always get a little, that little anchor who always, you know, kind of asks for money. It's just kind of annoying because it's just like, dang, you only call me when you want something. Like, you don't want that person around you. Also, they borrow other random things, whether they're big or not big. Such as they borrow your clothes without asking, or it's like, okay. Like, you ever seen that friend where you'd be like, dang, man, that shirt look good. Wait a minute. My home, that's my shirt. Like, that person, or even like my ladies, where they'd be like, ooh, those jeans look good on you. Wait a minute. Those are my jeans, because I, I cut them right there. You know, like, these are the person, they, they, they try to take a little advantage. They're like, oh, yeah, I just thought, you know, you wasn't wearing it that day, so you might not be trying to wear it ever again. Like, it's like, so annoying where you're actually planning on wearing something, and you can't find it, and then later on you find that they have it. That's so irritating. They also go through your fridge, and it took your food. That's annoying. Now, it's one thing with their family, or like a great best friend then that's 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 expected like i expect my friends come over to be like oh yeah bro what you got in this fridge like hey i got some juice in there i got some <laughs> hey i got some sandwiches in there just go ahead you know just, just let me know so i know what to get later you know what i mean like when they're when they're like basically family then that's different but the ones who just you're, you're kind of casual with them they just kind of they eat your food that's annoying or even when you guys are out in public and they stick their hand in your food like that's honestly asking for a fight. Like, you don't just put your hands in my food. Like, I don't know where your hands is. is. Like, I'm not OCD, but I am pretty clean. And I know for, like, me personally, like, I touch my face a lot. So, my hands need to be clean. So, you'll see me washing hands, like, like 50 times a day just because, like, ah. So, if I don't know where your hands is and you try to reach anything of my face or my food, you're asking to start a problem. They also try to take big things. You know, they always try to borrow your car. Don't let them borrow your car. If it's an emergency, let's just say their car is in the shop. Okay. And they got to go get their mother. Or they got to go to work and you're off today. Okay. But at times, do not. Because, like, it's not theirs. And you would think that some people would take other people's properties with more respect. But no, they won't. You do come back and it's scratched. Or a mirror is gone. Or they come back in a whole another car, and you're like, oh, where's my car at? And they be like, oh, yeah, my bad. Um, so this is a rental. You get this until Thursday because like, I kind of I kind of crashed it. You know, I just hit a little pole because, you know, I was on live and stuff. So I, I hit a little pole. But they'll fix it. Like, it's like, what? So guess what? Now your insurance is going up. And now when it comes to trying to sell that car, you have to report that your car has been in an accident. You want to know why? Because you gave your car to somebody who doesn't care. Also, they waste your time. The takers waste your time. They are taking your time away from you because they either are always trying to get you into doing things that you don't really want to do, but you try to say yes because they're your friend, but that comes with a little bit of here, 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 because like, you know what's priority. Don't let them take, you know, your, your priorities and prioritize that underneath theirs. That is not how this works. You have things you need to do and they have things they want to do. And don't let their wants become more important than your needs. Also, they, ones, the ones who waste time are the ones who fall right under the flakers. Because those are the ones who kind of leave you lonely. And isn't it upsetting where, like, you might have had, like, a friend date? You know, you guys were going to go to have a picnic. Or you guys were going to go to the movies, going to go out to eat, maybe going to the beach. You know, and you're kind of waiting around to hear a reply. And you hear nothing. 
You get nothing. You done called them. Straight to voicemail. It's just like, really? Like, nothing? Like, you're you're kind of overexcited. You're like, yeah, man, I can't wait to see my friend. Like, we're going to go do stuff. You might even been telling people. You might even cancel some other plans. And the whole time, they, they didn't come. And it hasn't been the first time. Like, honestly, you get about two chances before it's just like, all right, we're never making plans again. Because it just kind of takes the joy out of it. Like, as since you don't want to see them anymore because they're kind of just wasting your time. And it takes away from opportunities of you doing something else with somebody else. And it's so annoying. Like, when you cancel with someone who flakes on you. No, I'm sorry. When you cancel plans with somebody you actually want to be with and the person you're with or tried to be with, they flake on you. Like, that just, again, it kind of makes you not want to be around them. Also, the snail falls, like, right below them because, like, they're growing at a very slow rate. Now, take it. There's a difference between gradually growing at a slow rate and barely doing anything. Like, the people who are gradually growing are, like, let's just say the ones who are trying to learn, trying to better themselves. But the ones who are going at a slow rate are the ones who, like, binge watch, you know, <laughs> Atlanta Housewives or something, maybe Empire. I haven't watched any of those shows because I don't really watch TV. But I, I know they're long seasons. And let's just say they're one of those people who try to binge watch everything. And then they want to be productive. Don't let them scroll, slow your growth because they're taking away from opportunities for you to grow as an individual. And the thing is, what you have to pay attention to as the takers, and if you're a giver, the thing is, the givers, as givers, like, remember, we have very few limits because our primary, our, prim our primary, goodness gracious, goal is to help satisfy and benefit others sometimes we gotta snap out of that because we gotta take care of ourselves first to help be able to help others but when we put people first like that's an issue for takers because remember we have very few limits when it comes to helping people they have no limits when it comes to taking away from people so don't let these people take away from your time and your money and your fun because overall they're just taking advantage of you you don't want to be taken advantage of because look, if you let a friend do it, then other people have the opportunity to do it and they might not do it the same way as a friend may, but it's like little nitpicky things here where one person might take your money, one person might take your time, one person might take your food. Now, each there, there, there's, those are three different people, but they're still taken away from you. And if you let a friend take all three, there's, you're kind of just like left with nothing. So the taker, make sure you pay, pay attention to them. You also got the sweetener. <laughs> I like that word, right, right, right? They're the ones who sugarcoat everything. Like, they let you walk out the house looking like who did it and why. Like, you walked out the house and people are like, ooh, mm, 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 yeah, she don't love herself. Yeah, no, nah, he, he didn't take the time to even comb. Like, you ever see some guys who didn't even look like they attempted to brush their hair? Didn't look like they attempted to flick their collar? Didn't look like they tried to put on a belt? Those those people have terrible friends because they let their friends say, mm hmm yeah, mm -hmm, you're good. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You're, you're straight. Like, those friends that they have are terrible. Please, don't let sweeteners be around. They also let you walk around looking like a hot mess. So not just leave the house, but even just being around. Like, you just you just look unhealthy. You know, like, they they don't care too much they just want to help satisfy you you got to eliminate that also they don't want to tell you when you're wrong listen i tell my prayer my friends when they're wrong in any situation i will look them in their face and say hey you're dead wrong because if you're not the and not in the right in this situation i'm not gonna help satisfy that like you're gonna think doing bad things is okay and it's never okay this is why they're called bad things so they're the ones who don't want to tell you that you're wrong in a situation because they feel that sense of loyalty to you and they feel that if they don't, you know, agree or sway with your opinion, then you're going to be mad at them and which you probably are and which you're also immature because that means you can't take constructive criticism and you need to grow up. So this is another reason why the sweetener is bad. They also don't tell you what you need to hear in order to better yourself. These are the ones who, again, let you stay contempt with who you are. And that's not good. Because, for one, it's not allowing you to grow. And two, they're enabling you to be consistent. 
consistently bad. <laughs> and the thing is, you might not even be like such of a bad person, a poor person. However, if you're not doing anything to elevate yourself, then you're going to just stay consistent. And guess what? Everybody else is going to pass you by, pass you up. Your friend might even, might even pass you up. That is a reason why they're kind of bad. Because let's just say they're like, oh, yeah, you're fine. Whole time they're elevating their game, but they're not trying to better you. And they're letting you stay contempt. And once you're stagnant, it's hard to get past that. Another type, the Mr. slash Mrs. Situationship. Woo! Mm. Do you get that friend who's always talking about the relationship? Or every time you hear about them, they got another significant other? Like they change every other week? It's like, mm, you're, just, you're real irritating. Like you're really, <laughs> you're bothering me. Like every conversation, they're talking about their you know significant other. They're talking about their possible love life most of the time and guess what you don't even care like you hear it so often so frequently it's so common that it's just like um okay and well what do you want me to do about it like what steps do i need to take to help you in your situation there's nothing you can do about it they consistently you know either don't like relationships or they don't like their significant other or maybe they're just really just trying out all the fish in the sea Hey, you know, maybe you want tilapia. Disgusting. Maybe you want some catfish. Catfish, catfish is not too bad. It depends on who makes it. Um, maybe they want some shrimp. Shrimp isn't fish, but it is a seafood, so we're going to stay in the water. You know, maybe they're trying to sample the whole sea, and you're kind of, you kind of get tired of it because, in a sense, you don't even realize. Like, I know personally, like, my one friend. Well, actually, it's a group. It's three of us. So, it was a crowd. Ha-ha. <laughs> I don't pay attention to them because the other two are girls. So they go back and forth. They have conversations. I usually have my headphones in. I just be there for the vibe, you know? But I remember one time we're going to call her friend M. She was not there. So I end up being with friend I. Well, we're going to call her N. So friend N and I had to have a conversation because friend M wasn't there. And I realized why friend M was so upset because friend N talked about her dude quite frequently like i'm like yo who 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 is t i don't who is him oh that's your dude oh that's who we've been talking about for 45 minutes like you kind of just phase in and out because it's so consistent it's so annoying oh my goodness i kind of those those ones that irritates me other type you don't want to be around debbie who's debbie she's a downer you know she's the one who comes with the poor vibe and it's not just here and there. Like, it's super consistent. Like, they come with that poor spirit. Like, that negative... Mm. Like, I don't know if you guys ever seen Harry Potter. And I think it was the Chamber of Secrets. the Or any of them, honestly. Like, there's a girl in the bathroom. She's very, very poor vibe. She just... Mm, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like you guys. Leave. Like, she's kind of like that very poor spirit. And you that's how you kind of feel when you get around them. Like, they literally make everything a drag. Like, the day seem like it goes slower with them. You don't really be happy with them. Literally, they always have this poor attitude. Like, you can be upbeat, excited about, like, a new promotion or a new car. And you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. I mean, there's other things that you could have done. Or I think that you, like, you don't really, you don't, you kind of get irritated when you leave them, honestly, you're, you feel exhausted after you leave them. That's a better word of being it. Where it's just like, you know, they kind of just took all the life, all the energy out of it. And one thing they sometimes tend to do is they have a lot of issues. And you know what that happens? They put those issues on you. And you unintentionally carry that weight. That weight is not yours. Do not carry it. There's nothing wrong with being there for your friend and listening and trying to, you know, comfort them. But there's a there's a gray area in there. And honestly, for me personally, that's where I stopped being like the the counselor for my friends because there was so many of them. Because A, I had a lot of friends. I kind of still do have a lot of friends, but a lot of friends who trusted talking to me. And there's nothing wrong with that because they like my opinion. However, I do not want to hear 30 people's problems every day. Because if I'm having a great day, if I'm having a LeBron All-Star Weekend day, like, I don't need this one person just to just bring me down. Like, mm. or I just feel like I ain't did nothing. Or I just want to go home and go sleep because I'm so exhausted. Like, and then think about having that with multiple people. Like, you really begin to carry that weight. And 
when you talk to them, you don't really want to talk about fun things. Your first question is always, hey, how have you, how have you been? Are you good? How have things? Like, you asking that question, you sometimes spark a new, you know, conversation that might even be worse than the last one. But because that's what they have put on your shoulders, now that's what you're accustomed to. Now, don't get this wrong. Do not abandon your friend. But you have to lay the lines of what they can tell you and what you're willing to accept. This way, you aren't carrying that weight of their problems because their problems should not be your problems unless you're part of those problems. But <laughs> if you're not part of the problem, do not put yourself in that situation and do not carry the other weight. And then lastly, can y'all guess it? Probably not. The last one is the gossiper. Woo, when I say they talk too much, goodness. They just, they nonstop all day. Like they might as well be one of those, those, uh, where did those, those call people where they're like $10,000, $20,000, we got $30,000 over here. Anyone else? Like one of the auction people, there we go. Where they just, they just, they, a mile a minute, just, they just never stop talking. And it's so irritating because at a time, like you don't even know what the conversation about, but they're still going. And two, they're usually talking about nothing, like at all. It's usually never important. Like they're they're literally just gossiping. Something they might have seen on Twitter or something that's a trending topic on Instagram. Do you care? Depending on what individual you are, you might. Me personally, I'm like if it's not making any money, or if it's not making me happy, or if it doesn't really affect me, why do I care? Like people who talk about pop culture with me, they probably get upset because they're like, oh my gosh, she cheated on her. Who are either one of them? Oh, you don't know. I don't don't. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, she has two husbands. Well, who is she? Oh, you don't know. I'm sorry. I really, I, I, I have no clue. Can you, please don't elaborate neither. I don't, I really don't care because unless she's sending me a check for pay for the school tuition, then I don't think she's really going to help me unless her two men are going to send me a check. I don't know what to say to that or that situation. Like these are the ones who really are just always going. And at a, at a point, if you ever notice, they're always telling someone's business. If you actually key in after a certain point. And you want to know why that's an issue? Because this means they could be telling your business. Now, of course, they're going to be like, oh, don't worry about it. Oh, it's safekeeping. However, however, have you ever heard some information that you told them out of somebody else's mouth? Like, you know it came out of their mouth. Just for some fact is that's the only person you told. And they're going to tell you, oh, no, I didn't tell them. Or maybe they overheard me on the phone with you. Like, first of all, I was in person because I don't talk about personal things over the phone because the feds are listening. Pay attention to that. But they're the ones who are always running off the mouth. Like, they're always running off the mouth. They're telling information, and that is not okay. And the thing is, with this one as well, they express more when they're mad. And that's something you need to pay attention to. Like, if you see that they're constantly upset, and have like bad feelings towards someone else and they're spilling information that you didn't ask for about them, guess what? They're probably doing the same about you. And that's something, or the gossiper is someone you want to get away from. So to recap, the taker, this is the one who's really taking your resources. We're gonna shorten like that. And you're taking away from your opportunities and ways for you to grow. You do not want the taker away from you. It's in the title. They're not a giver, they're a taker. They're taking advantage of you. The sweetener. This is the one who will not, you know, tell you the truth. They're going to sugarcoat anything you ask them or, you know, try to get out of them just because they don't want to hurt your feelings or they don't want to see you progress. Mr. and Mrs. Situationship. These are the ones who have a lot of problems in their love life, and that is not your business. You may love them, but you don't love their partners. Do not get yourself involved. Debbie. This is the downer. This is the one who always has that poor vibe. It's very consistent. It really irritates you. Remember, there you do not abandon your friend, but you do not put their weight on your shoulders. And then lastly, you got the gossiper. This is the one who talks a mile a minute, and they're always telling someone's information. So remember, they could possibly be telling yours. Pay attention to that. And I'm going to leave it at that.